when describing reliability, certain car brands come to mind. Toyota, Honda, Lexus, and Mazda all make that list. But guess what? Something has actually changed. Could it actually be that BMW is more reliable than this latest Honda? Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. When car manufacturers try to get innovated, they wind up sometimes missing the boat. Vehicles like this with blown transmissions, or even this Kia. We know that there's lots of engine problems that are erupting and they're listed all over NHTSA today. Audis, front differential issues, oil consumption, timing chains. And then we talk about Acura and believe it or not, Honda Acura has had some problems with automatic transmissions in various models. Lord knows Jeep has always been on the very bottom of the pecking order in terms of reliability. And there's a whole host of reasons why that is. And then the GMC terrain and those, of course, with some of these certain engines and the oil consumption and oil leak problems that they've seen. How about Fiat's like we have beautiful Fiat 500 right here. Here we have the Abarth edition. This is the sporty little hot rod. Of course, we've got the soft top there. Quite a fun, quick, peppy looking little car, but they have their issues. Electrics, transmission, cooling system problems and engine galore. I mean, after all, there is an affiliation with the Chrysler Dodge products. And Lord knows, BMW has had more than their share of problems. Well, here we have the BMW X5, it's a 35. So this is the turbo, the single turbo, the N55 engine. And although it's not as bad as the N54 with the twin turbo before it, these still have problems. I had a buddy that had one. He couldn't get the dealer to properly diagnose and fix an issue with hunting and stalling. He just sort of lived with it. And by the time the lease expired, he just said, you know what, I'm handing it back, I've had it. They couldn't fix it properly. As well, a lot of these have coolant leak issues as well as oil consumption and more specifically oil leak issues around the valve cover gaskets, oil pan. Can't forget about turbos and wastegates, but they are getting better. And I'll show you the next generation of six cylinder by BMW is right here. We have a 440 BMW. Great looking headlights by this BMW standard style grills. They've got some great profiles along the side of these beautiful looking cars. And then at the back, you'll notice this is the 440i. And it's the X drive, so it's all wheel drive. Lord knows BMWs more than had their share and had to pay their dues. Go back to naturally aspirated cars back in 2006. In 2007, they bumped it up to what they called the N54 twin turbo straight six. And it was notoriously ruthlessly problematic. Of course, wastegates, high pressure fuel pumps, injectors, water pumps, thermostats, cooling lines. It leaked like a sieve. It was just a bad engine. Great for the tuners because it had forged internals, but push come to shove it was not a reliable daily then comes along the n55 was the next generation they revised it it went to became a single turbo twin scroll that's what i showed you in the x5 then along comes the engine that's tucked away in here and this is called the b58 finally after the third generation of turbocharging their inline six cylinder engines they finally figured out a lot of the problems. They have heat encapsulation, so they have less of that high and low temperature swings and less chance of having problems develop because of the hot and cold cycles. They've also somewhat revised the gasketing around the oil filter housing that was also notoriously known for leaking in the previous generation engines. Now they did bump up the power, but they also bumped up the efficiency and the reliability in the current generation B58. It's been around now for a few years and there's not a lot of shocking news. It's actually a relatively solid engine and hasn't been causing BMW a whole lot of problems. As well as the ZF eight speed automatic transmission that it's coupled to is actually relatively bulletproof. So now BMW is currently sitting on a relatively stout platform if you stick with the four cylinder and the six cylinder engines. Don't bother with the V8s. But as good as Honda is, unfortunately, there's been a problem that's crept in through the back door and it affects a whole bunch of different vehicles. For example, what we have here is the Honda Civic Turbo right there. And it's an SI, as you can see, it's a sporty little so-and-so. The CRV, the Accord, as well as the Acura CDX, because Acura, of course, is an upscale Honda. But it's actually the turbo 1.5 liter four cylinder engine called the L1587 1.5. That's right, Honda has finally introduced some turbocharging to a standard street driven vehicle. Now what's so special about that engine? Well, it's actually direct injected and because it's turbocharged, there's a whole nother level of complexity that Honda has now introduced into these engines. Now it's because it's direct injected, it applies a high pressure fuel 
right into the cylinder. And of course, sadly, in certain conditions, it's even more pronounced, particularly in very cold weather or if you drive really hard when the car, car's not totally warmed up. Those can all exacerbate the problem and that's putting gas beyond the piston rings. And if you get gas belonging the piston rings, you start diluting the oil below it. Well, it's not just adding a little fuel to the oil, that's the problem. You start washing cylinder walls that can create scoring as well as low compression related issues. You might start to see the oil level rise a little bit over time. You could actually see some power loss as well as misfiring and just poor running as well altogether. But most importantly, gasoline is essentially a solvent. So if you put too much gasoline in the oil where you need lubrication, what do you think that's going to do? It's going to wash away the oiling surfaces. Worst case condition, you could actually start taking a toll on the lower end of the engine rod bearings as well as the oiling points, cam lobes, all those areas. If you left the oil long enough with the gas starting to build up levels in the bottom of the engine, you could create the perfect storm at which that engine could start to drastically fail or deteriorate. Now it's not that BMW didn't pay their dues or Porsche. A lot of brands that use turbocharging and now moving into direct injected also had some problems along the way and they've had to work that out. This essentially is Honda's first attempt at what we're looking at direct injection and turbocharging simultaneously. And of course, clearly there's some bugs that need to be worked out. Honda's actually working on a software update that's intended to try to reduce those problems. You know, actually surprisingly enough, and Toyota coincidentally now uses a double system, a conventional injection, as well as a direct injection for when the time is right. But of course, Putting too much fuel at high pressure when the cylinders are shrunken, as in cold weather, that's going to lead to these problems. Now, unfortunately, if you're one of the happy souls who owns one of these unfortunate engines, and the reason I say that is because in its of itself is a great engine from a performance standpoint. It's fun, it's peppy, it's phenomenal on fuel. So if you own this vehicle, then you can appreciate the positives. But if you want to manage the oil dilution issues, there's three key things you need to do. Minimize the amount of idling that you do. So get in the car, let it idle for 30 seconds, off you go. Don't drive it hard because that's the other part minimize your hard driving for a long period of time at least till the vehicle is entirely warmed up let that heating cycle go through because it's that heating that can also help dissipate some of the fumes and the fueling within the oil so proper warm-up is a win and the other thing of course if you're putting fuel into the oil you want to change your oil much sooner maybe half your oil services than what typically Honda is advising what does it hurt so you change your oil a little more frequently but at least you're reducing the amount of gas that's accumulating within your sump of your engine now, another unfortunate result of these direct injected engines is something that a lot of other manufacturers suffer as well when they're using this type of injection system is carbon buildup. That's right. You get an excessive amount of carbon buildup on the backside of the intake valves. When you use port injection, it actually constantly washes the backs of the valves so they stay clean. But now you're putting the fuel right into the combustion chamber and you start to develop this carbon. That in time can allow oil to start sticking to the valves, make its way up the intake manifold and ultimately results possibly in some oil blow or oil consumption that you would normally wouldn't expect from these types of engines. Don't fret, this isn't new. Audi's dealing with these issues, BMW. Almost every brand that uses directed injection does face some level of this. And it just means walnut blasting and some servicing to take everything apart and clean it up properly. Just put it back to service again. So of course, some of the classic symptoms of excess amount of carbon buildup on the valves means poor performance, sluggish acceleration, poor idle, sloppy stalling. I mean, all of that can be a result of too much carbon. I mean, after all, you're not putting the right mix in there or you're choking it off. What do you think's gonna happen? Sadly, that's what goes down. There's yet another symptom of these particular engines being their direct injected and turbocharged. And spark plugs are yet another problem. Of course, if you're getting all that carbon in the intake as well as the back of the intake valves, what do you think is going to happen to the spark plugs? That's right. They're cold plugs because most turbo engines need a colder plug because when you ignite under high compressed power, of course, typically you need a cooler plug suit to prevent detonation. But unfortunately, a colder plug does not allow for the engine to dissipate all those fumes again. So very similarly, as you find in a lot of the BMW world, I mean, M5s and a lot of these modern day direct injected twin turbo engines that you're finding in the BMW world, you've got to change the plugs every 10, 20, 30,000 miles just to stay ahead of the problem. As well, BMWs, a lot of times you're changing the the coil packs and they're one per cylinder as well, that gets quite pricey. Now I wouldn't know necessarily if Hondas are going to be that detailed in the regimen, but I would expect that the levels of maintenance and the lifespan of the current generation 1.5 liter turbo Honda engines aren't anywhere near what the older generation naturally aspirated engines once were and the 500,000 mile level of ownership that many previous owners once really enjoyed. 
So the bottom line, companies like BMW have had a much greater head start, have started developing engines and efficiencies with direct injection, and of course they already know what to expect with the longevity of a lot of their engines. Specifically, the four and the six cylinder engines are in fact the drivetrains of choice in the BMW world that likely may outlast the unknowns of what we can expect in this new 1.5 liter turbo Honda engine. And based on a limited amount of response and knowledge that we currently have with this newer generation of Honda engines, if we were to extrapolate and draw a best fit line, it certainly looks like we're giving up all the reliability and longevity that we once knew and loved in the Honda engines. And with all of that said, be sure right there, you're gonna wanna check that out. I'm gonna share with you a list of five of the best, most reliable cars that will likely make it over 500,000 miles. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. Catch you real soon. Bye-bye.